Welcome back to The Vault. I'm your host, Bro Gilbert, and this time around we are taking a look at a classic project. This one really changed the game for me and a lot of other performers. At the time, I didn't know a lot about Andy Nyman. I've come to find out, obviously, that he is a brilliant actor, both on stage and for film and TV, and a creative force. One of the biggest creative forces behind Darren Brown's hit series in the UK, and there's so many more things I could say about Andy Nyman, but he doesn't put out a lot of material. So when Get Nyman came out, uh, it was just incredibly different experience. You get him performing in front of a live audience in a little theater. So you get to see the pacing, the timing, the real world interaction. Also, there's an interview that Mark Paul does with him and it's next level. And this is something that, of course, we live in this world of of inexpensive downloads and we're used to getting something for $10. This is more expensive. There's no big flashy trailer. I'll actually just put a little clip of one of the routines so you can see his complete thinking. And that's all I have to say. It's worth the ticket. This is Get Nyman by Mr. Andy Nyman. I don't know if you ever have that feeling when walking back from the tube late at night, get the sensation you're being followed. Look round, you are. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's not a nice feeling. All right. So there is a school of thought, which is you can kind of tell from the way that somebody walks. You're often taught, don't walk like a victim. Okay? If you walk like a victim, you're more likely to get mugged. So you don't walk like that, and you won't. Big school of thought that you can tell from the way somebody moves, what they're thinking, what they're going to do. A target on the person. Just drop your hands. Just there. <laughs> and what that allows you to do is when you look at them, you invent a kind of dead spot in the middle. And that will allow you to see what they're going to do. I've got three things here. I have a gun. Not real. I have a knife. Real. So be careful. <laughs> <laughs> and this could be a little mess. I'm going to turn away from you. You're all done, so I can turn around. Weapons are off the table and, and hidden. OK. Clean and clear. <laughs> Excellent. Take a step towards me and stop. All right. Here's what I want you to do. You took one step be, uh, towards me so you know that there's a step behind you that's clear. I want you to take a step back. All right, okay, stop. And what happens is that, it's very clear if you know what you're looking for. <laughs> All right, what happens is this. I ask Chris to turn round, and even though he just moved really easily to come forward, when he turns like that, he doesn't turn easily, which tells me that the thing in the middle of his back isn't comfortable. All right, so it's not the little knife, and it's not the comfy gun. It's got to be the canister that's in the middle of your back. Yeah, take it out and put it on the table if I'm right. Let's hear it. Yeah, all right. Cool. Right pocket knife, left pocket gun. Right pocket knife. Yeah, left pocket gun. Yeah. Don't go anywhere yet. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, the one really... <laughs> Um, it was very clear, and thank you, it was very helpful. Uh, but the, the really interesting thing about dead zoning is that if you get it right, you can kind of leap to another stage. And you can leap to another stage, which is that you will kind of second guess what someone is going to do before they even do it. Show you. This target that's been stuck on you the whole time. If I lift it up, it'll show you. The canister. Back pocket, knife, right pocket, gun, left pocket. Give him a round of applause. <laughs>